And now we'll be looking at this first implementation of a servo and a door or a gate. Uh, so I'm, I have the model uh, built, but I've, you can see, suppressed uh, some of the components. Uh, suppressing is a useful way to roll back the model or certain features. So just to see how that works, uh, you right click on the component and then you either say unsuppress to bring it back or you say suppress there to um, act like it's not in the model. As I mentioned, this servo is mounted 0.33 inches between that surface and that surface. And that's so that you can have three layers of wood to uh, do the mount in a relatively simple way. Uh, with that uh, backspacing, then the arm here will clear the inside edge of the side. And then you can mount the rest of your door to this face. Now, you notice I put these red uh, placeholders um, on both sides of this arm, and that's so that you could mount to either side of the arm. In this case, the screw would stop uh, roughly here, and it would not keep going into the plate, in case you were wondering about that. Our next piece is the servo mount. I'm going to suppress it here. And so it's the three layers of wood, uh, simple mounting. Obviously, there's a mold cavity that is making room for the servo itself. Uh, the only thing peculiar about uh, designing this or placing it is that if you aligned that surface to this surface, then when you do mold cavity, this round portion would become tangent to that surface. And that will create an error in uh, SolidWorks because it doesn't, um, it, it finds zero thickness geometry. So if you find that error, just move the uh, servo either up or down so that it's not a tangent situation. And after you do the mold cavity, that part will look something like this. These obviously are the screw holes uh, to mount it. And then it doesn't cut it all the way through, but uh, when you do laser cutting, I would suggest to keep it simple to make all three of your layers have the cross section as shown on the left side. Uh, there's no advantage to having uh, one have this other cross section. And then you just stack them all together and you have a mount. One other thing to know about these placeholders, the red placeholders for screws, you'll notice some of them are smaller than the hole that they go into, and some of them are larger than the hole that they made with. For example, that hole in this one. The idea here is that the larger ones are for making a clearance hole in the wood part, so that when you drive the screw from right to left, it clears the wood part, which would be here, and then it engages, the threads engage into the small hole there. And the next part to add to our model is the edge of the door, or the side plate. And this part has uh, cutouts you can see from the door itself. Those will be made later, because we haven't added the door yet. Uh, it certainly has mold cavity cutouts for these three red placeholders. Uh, and that's how we would attach that to the arm. We'd have uh, there's a couple options here. You'd certainly need to screw here because that's the one that will take uh, most of the torque because it's at the end of the arm. And you could either have another screw here or you could just have a pin here uh, or a screw. Uh, there, you'll need a, a screw to mount the arm to the servo and you could use that same screw all the way through to mount all three together. So a number of options there. Now in order for this to rotate in SolidWorks, we do need to pay attention to how we mate this part to the model. And so let me go into my mates. The way you do this is uh, click the plus arrow next to the part. That brings up a whole bunch of stuff about the part. You can see it's actually the whole model. Uh, but the first item in the list is how it is mated to the uh, rest of the assembly. And um, normally it'll come in like this. You hit the plus and you can see there's two mates active so far. This is a coincident mate simply meaning that we're putting the uh, side plate against the face of the arm. But the important mate for rotation is this use of what's called a lock mate. And so a lock mate is done. Let me right click this, edit feature. Uh, it's shown right here. And this is locking the entire door edge or that side plate to the arm. So if the arm moves, it will move. And that's the best way to constrain something in this situation where you want it to move and you don't want it to be fixed, for example, to a mid plane of a part or something like that. Now let's add the door in. OK, 
Okay, so this was designed uh, as a unique part with the fingers, of course, separate from any feature in the model, and that's what made the holes in this. And we also need to pay attention to how this is constrained, how it's mated in the model. So I'm going to open this one up and I'm open its mates up. Okay, and so you can see it has a mate here. This is uh, the outer faces, as you might expect. That's just like our box project. It has a dense distance mate to space it parallel away from some surface um, on the side plate. Now, it's important that this mate be between uh, the door and this side plate, because if it were, say, between here and this surface back here, then you would not be able to rotate the door, because that, that mate would constrain it to always be vertical. And last, it has one more mate, and that's what you might expect, just the top. Uh, this distance mate, I've just chosen it so that it would clear um, any of the red screws. That way I could always access one of those red screws. Uh, you could have it overlap one as long as you knew that you were using uh, two of the others. And our next part is uh, the identical door edge on the other side. Okay, so this one I placed in the model not using mirror, but just uh, by placing a physical, a second physical part. Uh, you could use mirror, there wouldn't be anything wrong with that and there are advantages to both. Uh, this one should be uh, already ready to go. It should not need any additional features because this hole is made by that red pin there, and that red pin is sized to be the same as the next part we're going to add, which is the eighth inch pin right there. Okay, so the eighth inch pin will provide the other end of the hinge for that. And a word on the mates for the door edge. The mates that make sense for that would be uh, first to have it coincident between uh, this surface and any of the inner finger surfaces. Or you could do it like the other um, side and use these outside surfaces. Uh, that surface right there, that would be fine for that mating. Uh, again, we're mating it to the door because we want it to swing with the door. Uh, if that's what you would expect. That one is uh, the front face, and that's also you, what we would expect just to fix it. The last constraint is actually one for the pin, not for the door. Um, it's to tell the pin where to exist relative to that face. Okay, and the mates for the pin. These would be that distance one we mentioned, and then a coincident mate on an axis. So let me bring this one up, because I don't know if we've seen this before. Here I'm mating the axis of the SG90, that's the servo, with the axis of the pin itself. And that was done so that the uh, entire door rotates about one hinged axis. And so if you don't see axes, uh, the way you get them to show, I'll need to get out of here to get up to it, uh, this little, the eyeglasses here, this is very handy for showing different features of the model. And this icon right here, View Temporary Axes. These are very um, useful for axisymmetric features. So when I click that off, you see that you can't see the axis uh, of the pin, and you can't see any of the axes for this. And when I click it on, there they come back. So that little blue axis, there's a bunch of them because there's a bunch of parts, but they're all collinear. Uh, those axes are very handy for aligning pins uh, with mating. So basically I lined the axis of that pin with uh, that axis, right? any of those right there, and that will ensure we're rotating on one axis. And the only other mate uh, that I think is important is the barrel itself. Uh, that is using a tangent mate so that it is rolling on the floor. You can see there and there. And it happens to have another tangent mate to line it up with some surface. Uh, you, as you stack more barrels, like if you had three, you could put one next to this and then one on top of them, and you could use tangent mates to align uh, that third barrel that's, that might be uh, raised in a stack. Now, if you remember, I made uh, these two sides, the left and right sides, by a mirroring process. And mirroring is very convenient in terms of speeding up the design. But when we have features on the two parts that are slightly different, it does present some complexities. And so let me show you uh, some ways to deal with this. The only real 
issue uh, for this model is that the servo itself, the body, does actually intrude slightly right there on uh, the left side. And that means we would need to use mold cavity uh, to make room for it. And I've got that suppressed right now. Let me bring that mold cavity feature back and you'll, con you'll see the implications of it. So I'm going to unsuppress. This is the mold cavity right here. And you can't see any difference there because there was nothing taken away. But the mirrored part now has that cavity, which um, I suppose doesn't do any harm, but it's going to show up in the drawing later. And the servo arm now makes a bigger hole there than the pin actually is. See, that hole was made by the diameter there. So how do we do with this? A uh, number of solutions. One is you could uh, simply not mirror the part. You could make that an independent part uh, and then just meet it separately. Uh, that's probably the simplest, uh, but it might take a little more time. Uh, another solution is, let me bring this back up uh, and I'll save it to rebuild the document. Uh, let me show you the sheet where these will be uh, cut, laser cut. So that's the door or the gate. There's the side plate or the uh, end. And then when you place the two sides, you can choose the view carefully. So let's see. When I go to side, you can see this view right here, the right side, that has that cut out. And this view here, the other side, does not. Uh, and so that's one way of handling it. Now the hole there is still too big, but that hole is very easy to resize in AutoCAD. You just double click on it and then retype the number for the hole at 0 0.120 instead of what it is. So that's the way I'm uh, doing it in this particular model, but it's certainly not the only way. On this part, uh, we mentioned it before, but when this comes into uh, ProjectCAD or AutoCAD, uh, we'd be deleting all this inside stuff and just laser cutting the C section, if you will. Another thing you may notice that SolidWorks puts these uh, center line marks in. Those are easily deleted in a number of places. You can delete them right here if you want to, just by selecting and hit delete. If you don't want them to show up at all, there's a handy setting for that. We go to Tools, Options, and then we go to Document Properties then to detailing, and then right over here, that this little check mark, center marks, holes, part, auto insert on view creation. If I uncheck that, and I'm going to say OK, now these center lines will still be there because the views have already been placed, but look what happens when I place a new view. Let's say uh, this one. I'll go down there. Uh, that new view does not have the center line. So I often uncheck that if uh, for laser cutting because it's rare that you'd actually want to mark that. So again, this is just one example of how you could do a gate, assuming you have a gate or something like it. Uh, in the next video, I'll show how to do the, uh, the gate controlled by a little linkage.